Welcome back to the show. Now, over 100 pirated DVDs of the recently released blockbuster Enderan was seized by the Chennai Suburban Police. The Central Crime Branch of the Suburban Police raided DVD shops in Ambatur and Ayapakam and seized over 5,000 pirated DVDs and VCDs worth 20 lakh rupees. Apart from Enderan, pirated DVDs of recently released movies like Bosse Baskaran, Bana Kathadi and Ravanan were also seized by the police. These DVDs are sold at a price of 30 rupees each, while Enderan DVDs are sold at 60 rupees each. The two accused were arrested and were produced before the court. They have been lodged at the Pural Prison. Now, for more on this, we will now go across to our uh, reporter Nithila, who's joining us live from the newsroom. Nithila, again, uh, you had pointed out to us that this is only the tip of the iceberg, that uh, th there's a lot more that needs to be done to, ta to tackle the problem of uh, movie piracy here. Absolutely, Ashmit. Uh, in fact, uh, India's costliest um, movie ever might be making box office history, but it's not managed to escape the clutches of piracy. Uh, 100 pirated DVDs are uh, found today in uh, North Madras, and earlier, 700 copies of the same film found in Hyderabad. Now, the two accused in that case have said that they've gotten these DVDs from Chennai, and they were marketing it in Hyderabad. Uh, also, now the Tamil Film Producers Association is uh, saying that they should work in close uh, mediation with the police, uh, in close connection with the cyber law police uh, to make sure that this doesn't happen again because this is not just an isolated event. Uh, in fact, in today's seizure it's itself, 5,000 uh, pirated CDs and DVDs were seized by the police. Uh, also, interestingly, Rajani fans seem to have uh, formed some sort of special teams to monitor uh, the CDs, uh, the places where CDs and DVDs are sold. They want to make sure that their uh, star is not hurt by piracy. That's some interesting development there with regard to Rajani's fan holding up the law with especially for uh, Rajani. Now, moving ahead. A tribunal has rejected calls to lift the Indian government's ban on Sri Lanka's defeated Tamil Tigers rebels, the LTTE. A judge who examined the petitions from sympathizers of the group said they do not have the right to make the demand. Shabir Ahmed reports on the issue. Petitions by these leaders which said the Indian ban on the LTT was illegal and should be dropped was thrown out by a tribunal. Just as Vikramjit Sen ruled, sympathizers do not have the legal right to make the demand. Whoever comes over here seeking solace and succor to get refugee status, they are stamped as LTT former activists or LTT agents. Not impressed, Justice Sen said the right to discuss the ban was restricted to the LTT as a group or its members and pointed out no one directly associated with the separatists was before the tribunal. Tamil Nadu People's Rights Forum, one of the two groups which filed the petitions, described the ruling as a waste of public money. You know, the government is wasting public money by constituting such tribunal. This tribunal cannot hear anyone because no member of LTTE, no office bearer of LTTE is in India. Okay. They this know that. So they are wasting their money and time. They are cheating the public. The tribunal will hold its hearing in Uti on October 20th. The Tamil Tiger rebels were banned in India in 1991 after they were blamed for the assassination of former Indian Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. In Chennai with Shabir Ahmed, Jason Dosh for NDTV Hindu. And some more news from the city. The post-mortem report on how a couple died in a fire in Aripuram and the scientific reports are out. The post-mortem report says that the 60-year-old man died as, as he sustained burn injuries. The woman who was patient and was undergoing dialysis treatment died due to suffocation. And for more on this, we will now head across to our reporter Salim who is joining us live. Now, uh, Salim, uh, there was at a point, uh, the police was investigating two lines of thought. One was that perhaps this could be a murder. The other one that this could perhaps only be an accident. Have they arrived at a conclusion after seeing the evidence? Yeah, Schmidt, the police have ruled out uh, that uh, it's a case of murder and they have registered a case of death under accidental fire. So there are three things. Uh, the postmortem report very clearly says that the 60-year-old man died as he suffered burn injuries and the 48-year-old woman, a patient and who was undergoing dialysis treatment, died due to excess smoke which resulted in suffocation. Uh, and uh, secondly, uh, the deceased uh, 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 couple's son and daughter are uh, living in the United States. Meanwhile, they were informed by the relatives and they are expected to be here tomorrow afternoon to attend the funeral. 
and uh, the scientific report very clearly uh, says that uh, also the police say that uh, the couple had uh, had installed four air conditioning systems in their house and uh, a power fl uh, fluctuation resulted in the electrical uh, short circuit and finally the police very clearly say that uh, the servant maids are innocent Right, Salim. Uh, thank you for joining us. That was Salim, our reporter, separating conjecture from facts. Again, it's been an accident, not a murder. Moving ahead, it's a gold rush for Indian athletes at Delhi. We'll get you all the updates from the Commonwealth Games on the other side.